What's up guys, Brad here, and today we're going to be reviewing 28 cards from the upcoming expansion, Knights of the Frozen Throne. And let's just jump right into it because we got a lot of cards. I don't really want to make this video too long. Just like the last video, upper left hand corner, you're going to see how I'm going to be rating these cards. First card is going to be the Death Knight Rogue. The Lyra, the Hollow, 9 mana, with a battle cry of gaining stealth until your next turn. Also, the hero power is going to be a passive, which is brand new to the game. During your turn, add a shadow reflection to your hand. As you can see on the right, shadow reflection is a card where each time you play a card, transform this into a copy. So this card has a lot of potential for combo rogues. Basically, think of Sherazin. You play a lot of cheap spells or minions, anything that's cheap. You want to get the four cards so you can keep shares in on the board. On top of that also Arcane Giant, as you can see in the video when Savitz released it, still has its zero mana cost. The thing is if a card is played and has been reduced from Emperor Thorson, saying if you're playing in Wild, the card is not going to have the reduced effect from Thorson, it's going to be costed as it would regular would. I think this card is actually quite great, the fact that it is 9 mana is the problem I see. Basically the only reason why I don't think this card will be meta defining. You have stealth so it's kind of like a one turn ice block which is very powerful. Make sure you don't attack when you're stealth. Do the attack first then play Valera the hollow. So then you are still stealth because just like a Strangle or Tiger you attack you lose a stealth. I see a lot of uh, play from this card coming out. I'm not sure if it's going to be meta defined just because of that 9 mana slot because as we've seen 9 mana is the clunkiest of all due to the fact you can't really do much after 9 mana. Say if you are at 10 mana you draw into this, you play this card and then what are you going to do? You could basically backstab, sinister strike, hallucination, I mean there's not too much you can really do but still I think the card's great, um, it's going to be a lot of fun to play around, very excited with the death knights. All right, next up we have Treachery, a three mana spell for Warlock, and it reads, choose a friendly minion, your opponent gains control of it. Very interesting card text here. Now, it's very hard to think about what cards synergize well with this card. We don't have a lot in the game right now. Basically, if you think about it, you have Ticking Abomination, which isn't too bad. If you think about it, you could play four mana, five, six, maybe trade into something. You then, when it's weaker, you give them the Ticking Abomination so you can clear their board efficiently by maybe just doing two damage to of what's left of the Ticking Abomination's health. Another great card is Doomsayer. For five mana, you're guaranteed to wipe their board the next turn. They don't have any way to interact with the Doomsayer. Other than that, I don't know what else you can really do for this card. There's not a lot of cards that are great as a negative why. I'm thinking they will maybe print out another card or two for the set to kind of go along with this card where maybe it's an overstead a minion with a negative side. Maybe you want to give your opponent that negative effect. But I don't think the card's really good. I think it's bad. If not, it's almost dust worthy due to the fact that there just aren't really cards available for this to really work out too great. I wouldn't say really dust it though because it seems to be kind of fun and I think in the future you're going to see more options for this card to be played. Next up we have Burlock, an amazing card, love the name, love the artwork. Shaman, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two Murloc with a battle cry, freeze an enemy. This is basically to go along with the freeze shaman that is going, that they're pushing in Knights of the Frozen Throne. I love the card, I think the fact that it's a Murloc is pretty pointless because murlocs aren't really a thing for shaman everything can happen is a card in wild which maybe makes this card a little bit better but basically look at it as a two mana two two with a freeze effect not bad but not amazing cards just okay i think it's just going to be a fun card because of the fact that i think freeze shaman is just going to be a fun deck i don't believe it will be too competitive Moving along, we have another Warlock spell, 3 mana, Unwilling Sacrifice. Choose a friendly minion, destroy it, and a random enemy minion. So it's another basically control spell for Warlock. I think of it almost as a bad version of Deadly Shot. I think the card is bad. I think Warlock has enough removal in the game right now. I don't believe this card will see any play. I think it's just bad. So we have a legendary rogue card next, 
Lillian Voss, 4 mana, 4, 5, Battlecry, replace spells in your hand with random spells from your opponent's class. So basically that burgle mechanic that Rogue has had and keeps getting these kind of cards. I like it, it's a lot of fun. Don't believe it's going to be seeing much play because random spells sometimes aren't the greatest. You can get shield slams. Cards like that aren't very good. I just don't see this card being played much. I mean, it has a decent body. 4 mana, 4, 5 is aggressively statted. It's a chill win yeti. That, that's fine. That's basically what you're looking for, a 4, 4 mana card. I just think that random spells aren't really great. It's a lot of fun, though, so you're going to be playing it in your fun decks. Okay, this uh, is going to be fun to say. Simulacrum. A mage spell, 3 mana. Copy the lowest cost minion in your hand. So, I just think of this card as it is for your quest mage. Think of it in that aspect. Quest mage, you're going to want to be copying your sorcerer's apprentice. You have two ways to do that right now. You have two sorcerer's apprentice, plus you have two molten reflections. You're able to get two more sorcerer's apprentice in another way. So you don't need to have both Sorcerer's Apprentice and both of your Molten Reflections in order to do your combo piece. Maybe this card's even a little bit better to be honest. But I'm thinking you're probably going to want to play all of the cards because you have that many more options to complete your combo. You still need to complete your quest, this does not help that in any way. I think Quest Mage is on the up with the cards they've printed, I'm excited about it. This card is just a buff to that, I think the card's great. Not sure if it's meta defining because I'm not sure how powerful Quest Mage is going to be. Maybe the last few cards that they release will help it even more. And we have Kriparian's card. He released Obsidian Statue, a 9 mana 4 8 priest card with Taunt, Lifesteal, and a Death Rattle of destroying a random enemy minion. This card is phenomenal. It has great stats, high health, 4 attack. Basically, look at Primordial Drake. Primordial Drake is seen a lot of times. The problem with this card, as I've said with the Rogue Death Knight, it's at 9 mana. Kind of makes it a little clunkier, but the fact is, it is Priest. It isn't too bad, and it has Lifesteal on it. So, Taunt and Lifesteal means that whatever they run into it, you're going to get 4 health each time it's hit. Then, it could destroy a random enemy minion. Now, they're going to be making efficient trades, so this card isn't going to be, you know, choosing probably the best minion on the board. But there is a chance that maybe it kills off something that you were wanting to kill off. That was their biggest threat. Card is great. Don't believe it's meta defining just because of that clunky 9 mana. Moving right along, we have another priest spell, Glacial Mysteries, which is 8 mana. And put one of each secret from your deck into the battlefield. Think about Mysterious Challenger. I think they noticed that Mysterious Challenger was a little broken, so they took away the body, made it 8 mana. And I think they also made it 8 mana because of Primordial Glyph. If it was 6 mana and Primordial Glyph, this card would be absolutely broken. I think the card is still good though. I mean, if you are playing Mirror Image, Counterspell, Ice Block, and Ice Barrier, you're drawing 4 cards for 8 mana and putting them instantly in the field. This is actually quite valuable. I don't think the card is bad. I'm not sure how you play a deck like this though, because Arcaneologist is going to draw those secrets on top of... This card too, maybe it's just a one of in a secret mage, something like that. I, I'm not sure exactly the deck that this fits into, but I'm quite afraid of this card because we all know how powerful secrets are. They are obnoxious, they're annoying to play around. I'm not a big fan of this card to be honest because I just hate playing around secrets, but I know that this is a powerful effect and I wouldn't let it go under your radar. Next, we have Devour Mind, a priest spell for 5 mana. Copy 3 cards in your opponent's deck and add them to your hand. Thought Steal for 5 mana, plus one more card. Not really that great. Uh, worse, just a bad card to be honest. I mean, nobody's really playing Thought Steal right now. It's a lot of fun though. It's going to be played in fun decks. If you're not going to play a deck like that though, it's just bad. You may as well just dust it. It's I don't think it's worth anything. Uh, Corpse Widow, a 5 mana, 4, 6 beast. Your Death Rattle cards cost two less this is a hunter card and it is quite phenomenal um death rattle cards costing two less this is a very powerful effect you can play this if it survives on turn six you're able to play savannah hymning plus maybe a secret or even hero power there are a lot of options the only thing that makes me wonder about the card is i don't know if there are too many death rattle cards that hunter is running right now other than maybe savannah hymning 
There are a couple more, yes, I know, but very powerful death rattles that you're wanting to play at a discount. Not sure what they are. Maybe there'll be a couple more cards that are released that we want to play along with it. Abominable Bowman, I don't believe, is going to be making any decks lately, even though I even theorycrafted a fun deck. But I don't think this card really fits into that deck. So I think the card is great, not meta-defining. Will be fun, can't wait to mess around with it. Next is a neutral minion, Corpse Razor, 5 mana, 3-3, three, three, Battlecry, Griffith Friendly, minion, Death Rattle, resummon this minion. Think about Ancestral Spirit for Shaman, 2 mana spell that has the same effect, but now it's on a body of a 5 mana, 3-3. Three, three. I don't really think this card is that great due to the fact that the reason Ancestral Spirit is good is because it's 2 mana and you're able to target a spell. So think about in Wild Sneed's Old Shredder, play it for 8 mana, on top of that Ancestral Spirit, you're able to resummon it on the same turn and 10 mana. This you're looking at mainly 5 or less minions, or you have to play something, have it live another turn, and then Corpse Razor on top of it. The other thing is the body's pretty terrible for 3-3. Three, three. Don't really like the card, I think it's just bad. Next we have Rune Forge Haunter, 4 mana 5-3. During your turn, your weapon doesn't lose durability. So this rogue card basically reads plus one durability because it's not going to really live too long with its three health, which is what makes this card weak in my opinion. If it was reversed a 3-5, then you would see this card being played, but I don't think it's really powerful enough. I think the card is just bad. And we have the Paladin card, Righteous Defender. One mana, one one with Taunt and Divine Shield. I absolutely love this card. Now it might be my rose tinted glasses because I love Paladin so much, but I look at it as basically Anoyotron 2.0. For one mana, you have Taunt and Divine Shield. Yes, it doesn't have that two health, which made uh, Anoyotron that much better, but it's another Argent Squire. They're pushing this Divine Shield deck for Paladin so hard. I think that this card actually has a spot. It's going to be in probably every single Paladin deck you're going to see. Hand buff Paladin, this just destroys it you're gonna want to buff your divine shield minions so you're looking at you know argent squire righteous protector wicker flame burn bristle plus the new bolvar i mean the the deck seems to be quite powerful even just in the hand buff aspect of it i'm not sure about divine shield paladin 100 percent, but i think that there is a deck that is coming that is going to be very powerful Next we have Tome Lurker, a neutral 5 mana 5-3 five, with a battle cry, add a random death rattle minion that died this game to your hand. Now it's a random death rattle minion that died this game, it's not a random death rattle minion that's died on your side of the board. So it makes this card a lot weaker because if this was able to only summon Savannah High mains, it would be a lot more powerful because you can maybe build your deck around that, so only having one or two death rattle minions. But because your hunter is built that way, maybe your opponent's hunter has Fiery Bat, and then you you get your Fiery Bat instead, instead of your Savannah High Main. This card's just trash. Plus, just like the Rogue card, 5-3 stats is horrible. This card is not going to see any play. You might as well dust it. Finally, here we have the Shaman Death Knight. Thrall Death Seer, 5 mana which is the lowest cost death knight we have seen so far with a battle cry of transform your minions into random ones that cost two more and the hero power transmute spirit transform a friendly minion into a random one that costs one more i think this is probably one of the most powerful death knights we've seen because it is so cheap you could play doppelgangster and thrall dustier in the same turn and you can get three seven sevens that is very powerful. This is not going to be seen play in the typical Evolve Shaman we've seen. It's going to be in a much slower version, a much more survivable tanky Shaman, I believe. You might even want to play Freeze Minions in this so you can, you know, basically set up your board a little bit more. You could stall the game and then you start evolving your minions that have high health, low attack, that make maybe efficient trades, and then you buff them. The also nice thing is that when you transmute spirit, a minion, you attack somebody, your minion might be a 5-5, five, five. it goes down to a 5-1, you transmute it, it gets healed and basically turns into a new minion, which everybody knows, I know that, I'm just explaining. I don't know if many people are thinking about that aspect, I've heard people saying, oh, I don't know, it seems a little rough, you gotta make things survive. This is very efficient, I think, actually. I think the card's meta-defining, yes, I think Evolve Shaman is gonna be one of the top decks, if not the top deck in the game. 
Just from what we've seen so far, that is. Talking about cards, I think, that are going to be shaping the meta, I think Crypt Lord is going to be one of them. 3 mana, 1 6 Druid card with Taunt, and after you summon a minion, gain plus 1 health. I don't think your aggro Druid really needs much more to progress them into the ladder. I think Aggro Druid is one of the more powerful decks that right now. Yes, there are a lot of counters, but this card is insane in it. The thing is that you're dropping a lot of minions very quickly in Aggro Druid. When you play this card, yes, it's a 3 mana 1 sick. That's not very powerful. Tar Creeper is better in that aspect. But on turn 4, there is almost no chance that they're going to kill this card. Then you play a couple minions, plus you Power of the Wild, or you Mark of the Lotus. And this card becomes like a 2-7 or a you know, 3-8, depending on what you play and what the damage is. Yes, it's very dynamic, but the fact of it is, this card protects your cards. Vicious Fledgling. Basically, you play this card, you play Vicious Fledgling, you Mark of the Lotus. It's going to be very hard for your opponent to get through Crypt Lord. It's basically, think of it as a bouncer. I think the card's going to be in every aggro druid deck that you're going to see. It is meta-defining. I am afraid of the aggro druids. Even though there are a lot of control decks that I feel like are going to make its way into the meta. And maybe aggro gets pushed out due to the fact that they can't get through all of the taunts. Next up we have Mindbreaker. 3 mana 2, 5. Neutral minion and hero powers are disabled. This card is very intriguing because if death knights are going to become a thing, this is basically a card that's going to be in all of your counter decks. It has good stats. 2-5 is nothing to mess around with. I mean, there's a lot of cards that have that stats and survivable. A lot of cards can't trade in and kill, you know, do 5 damage by turn 3. And hero powers are going to be very powerful as we've seen with these Death Knights heroes. Maybe you want to play it in a deck that doesn't use your hero power too often. Maybe a non-Death Knight version of a class. And you're not too worried about hero powering every turn. You're just going to be playing a lot of minions on curve. And they're going to be wanting to hero power you often, such as like a mage, like a freeze mage. This could be useful. I'm not 100% sure. As I said, it's one of the cards that is on the line. It depends on how the Death Knight does in the meta. I think the card's great, though, just from a guess of how I think the Death Knights are going to be. And yes, it does stop the passive the Rogue has because they're just disabled. That means it's just not going to happen the turn. Next, we have a Pirate, which I'm sure everybody is excited about. Phantom Freebooter, 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. And Battle Cry of Gain stats equal to your weapons. Now, the thing is, you don't have to worry too much because I don't think this fits in the Pirate Warrior right now. It's a little bit too slow. Basically, think of Bloodsail Corsair, but more expensive. I think you might see a new Pirate Archetype become due to this card. Maybe it's a little slower, and maybe it might be in Rogue instead. That's what I'm thinking. The card isn't bad, but I'm not sure where it's going to fit right now. I, I kind of like it. But I don't really see it being played much because I only really think Pirate Warrior is viable right now. And because it doesn't really make Pirate Warrior better, I don't believe you'll see play much. So I'm not, it's just okay. I don't really even know how to rate the card right now. Next, we got Embrace Darkness, a pre spell for six mana. Choose an enemy minion at the start of your turn, take control of it. Um, the card is basically a mind control with a corruption aspect to it. Think of those two cards kind of merged together. It's nice because it is six mana, but at the same time, it is a bit slow because they're able to trade in with that minion efficiently. Maybe they could trade and kill that minion off. If they're able to trade in efficiently and you have like a 4-2 that you're stealing instead of like a 4-8 Primordial Drake, then you're not really going to be too happy. I don't really like the card too much. I think it's a bit too slow. The only card I can think that this works like amazing with is you embrace darkness onto a Tyrion because it has divine shield so they can't really efficiently trade off Tyrion. So I guess if maybe Paladin becomes such a huge thing and Tyrion is just everywhere because Stonehill Defender makes three Tyrions into a Paladin deck then I guess you can maybe see it but I think it's just too slow and it's a bad card. And speaking of bad cards. Archbishop Benedictus. I'm sure everybody's gonna love this one. This has been a tough subject. I feel everybody's on the fence with 50-50. 7 mana, 4-6, battle cry, shuffle a copy of your opponent's deck into your hand, into your deck. Now, I want to just kind of paint this picture. You're playing against a warrior. 
you play this card. You have 15 cards, he has 15 cards. You then draw into Shield Slam. You then draw into other cards that you have in your deck. These cards are mixed together. They do not synergize together. Your deck is significantly weaker to their deck. The card is so slow. A 7 mana 4 6 is not good. The only reason why Curator is played is because it can potentially draw 3 cards and it has Taunt. This does not. It does nothing to the board. It is just a bad card. If you want to play this type of a priest, go ahead and have fun. It'll be a fun deck, I'm sure of it. But if you're not going to play that priest and you just want something competitive, you don't like messing around too much, I will st I'm will. i still going to mess around with this card because I like to have fun. That's once in a blue moon, hey, I want to play, you know, some stealing priest deck, basically. Steal all the cards, that's all I'm going to do. If you're not going to play that, just, just dust the card. It's not worth keeping. It will see no play. That's it. Also, another note is think about it this way. You played against Jade Idol. Uh, you know, you're playing against a Jade Druid. Jade Idol on their end is an 8-8. On your end, it's a 1-1 when you steal it. This card is just slow. It's not, there is no upside to it. You're going to get beat by any deck that goes into fatigue with this card. Just my opinion. I could be wrong. Next up we have Sunborn Valkyr, a 5 mana 5-4 five, neutral minion with a battle cry. Give adjacent minions plus 2 health. Uh, not much really to say here. It is an arena card for sure, and it'll be a very powerful arena card, but in Constructed, I don't believe it'll see any play. So next up, we have Stitch Tracker, a Hunter minion for 3 mana, 2-2 two, two stats of the Battle Cry of Discover, a copy of a minion in your deck. I actually like this card a lot. I think of it in a spell-centric Hunter deck. I'm thinking Secret Hunter, where you're playing a ton of secrets, a ton of spells, Arcane Giant, Savannah, High Main, Cloaked Huntress, and Professor Putricide. You're able to get two Professor Putricides. You could guarantee to get the Cloaked Huntress down. You know, depending on when you play this card, maybe you want to play on Curve. So on three, you play Stitch Tracker. On four, you play Professor Putricide because you just got a copy of it. And you have one still in your hand, so you're not worried about it living. There's a lot of versatility to the card. I think it's actually quite powerful, and I'm excited to mess around with it. I think it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited about the Seeker Hunter, and there's also a couple other hunters that I've come up with on my own, and I don't believe they're going to be good, such as Abominable Bowman Hunter, which is trashed here, but fun. <laughs> so, yeah, as I said, this card, I believe, is great. Nothing uh, nothing more, nothing less. Next card is Valkyr Soul Claimer. A warrior, 3 mana, 1-4, with the text that says, whenever this minion survives damage, summon a 2-2 ghoul. Um, they're printed a lot of whirlwind effect cards and damaging effect cards to warrior. I'm excited to see what the death knight is for warrior. Maybe it's something where damage minions get plus 2, plus 2 every time they're damaged or some crazy effect. But as of right now, Blood of Vicar this, you get a 2-2 and a 2-2 from Blood of Vicar. And then they're able to trade into this with a 3-2 that they played on turn 2. And then you have two 2-2-2s. Two, two <laughs> I don't think that's that great. I don't think the card's that great. I think the card is just bad, to be honest. I don't see where this card is going to be played much of at all. All right, we're on the final stretch here. And another controversial card, the Nomferatu Warlock card. Two mana, two, three. And Battlecry, remove the top card of your opponent's deck. First thing I want to say, absolutely love the name. Call out to Nosferatu. The card art is awesome. Team 5 did a great job designing this card. Now, the battle cry removing the top card of your opponent's deck. Everybody is going bananas about this card thinking, oh my god, it's overpowered. You can you know, discard their combo pieces. You can make them so much weaker. If they discard Archmage Antonitis, then what are they going to do? They're just going to concede instantly. I'll be honest. It's in Warlock, so you're tapping, you're doing a lot of damage to yourself. Even in a combo mage, I don't believe that's the end of the game. I think they could still burn you down. And realistically, whatever card that is, you could think of it as at the bottom of their deck, as Brian Kibler has mentioned. That card was never going to be seen anyways. There's not a lot of times that fatigue games are met. Maybe, it, yes, now I think it's going to be more likely due to the fact that there's a lot of control cards. But I don't think this card is that great. I don't think you care really what they discard. Yes, they're going to they're gonna know what card has been discarded and maybe it gives them a little more information, which is interesting. But other than that, I don't think the card is that good. It is just a 2-mana two 2-3, two, in other words. That's just my opinion. I think the card is just bad, to be honest. I, I know a lot of people are going to think otherwise. If the card is amazing, 
I will be quite surprised, to be honest. Next we have Cobalt Scalebane, a 5 mana 5 5 neutral dragon. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus 3 attack. I think this card's actually pretty powerful for a neutral minion, especially in Arena. But the key to it is that it gives another friendly minion plus 3 attack at the end of your turn. It's not the beginning of your turn, so it automatically is giving it. I like the card a lot, to be honest, and I think it's a buff to any deck that's going to be playing dragons. Especially in the standard rotation because there aren't a lot of dragons right now. If you think about it, Dragon Priest is okay, but all they're doing is really playing like four dragons in the deck. Maybe fits into Dragon Priest, I'm not 100% sure. Other than that, I think it's mainly just uh, an arena card. So the card's okay, nothing really too special to say. Next up, we have Necrotic Geist, a 6 mana 5 3, another 5 3 minion for us. Whenever one of your other minions dies, summon a 2 2 ghoul. Let's just get right to it. Cult Master, 4 mana, 4, 2. Basically, same effect of whenever something dies, do this. Whenever something dies for Cult Master, you're getting a card. Whenever something dies with this card, you're getting a 2-2 two, two ghoul. A 4 mana, 4, 2. 6 mana, 5, 3. Plus 1, plus 1 stats for 2 mana and summoning 2-2 two, two ghoul. Card's trash. End of story. <laughs> Next card, Meat Wagon. 4 mana, 1, 4 mech, which is awesome because we haven't seen a mech in a while. Death Rattle, summon a minion from your deck with less attack than this minion. This card's actually quite interesting. It's going to fit into a few decks, especially mainly for fun. There's a, this is one of the cards that you have to think about a lot of times. Token Shaman and a lot of totems has zero attack, so you're basically going to pull the totems out. Hand Buff Paladin, you can pull out a lot of cards because you're able to buff this card up to whatever you're able to. You can also buff it with like Blessing of Kings. There's a lot of versatility to this card. I'm not sure how powerful it is because of how it's going to be a random card. And the main downfall of it, obviously, is that it only has one attack and four health for four mana. So I think it is just too slow to really be good. But it's going to be a lot of fun to make this card work, and I'm excited to play around with it. I right, very quickly want to talk about this card as it is hot off the presses. The Ultimate Infestation, a 10 mana spell for Druid. It reads, deal 5 damage, draw 5 cards, gain 5 armor, and summon a 5-5 five, five ghoul. So this card is uh, quite interesting. There's a lot to it, so it makes it for hard to kind of evaluate. But I'm really thinking that the card's actually quite great if you think about it. It has impact on the board. You can clear off a minion that your opponent has played. You're drawing 5 cards, which is awesome. You're gaining 5 health, which isn't too much, but it is something, and then you summon a 5-5 ghoul, so there also is a board presence. It's not like you're doing nothing. I think drawing 5 cards is where you have to evaluate the card, and I think drawing 5 for 10 plus these other effects is worth it. I think the card's actually pretty great. Even though it is a little slow, the overall aspect of it, I think, is it's going to be good enough. You're wanting to draw those cards because I'm thinking about playing it in like a J Druid where you're going to be able to cycle through your deck very quickly and then maybe you have six cards in the deck. They're all Jade Idols. Then you play this card on 10. You are able to get, well, you know, you're, you've got 10 mana. You play Ultimate Infestation. You draw five Jade Idols. Then the next turn you draw the sixth one, you're able to play five of them and then you play the last one you put three more Jade Owls on your deck, so you're still not going into Fatigue. I think it's quite interesting, actually. I, I like it a lot. I think the card's great. Not sure about meta defining, just because of the fact that it is 10 mana and might be a little slow. And last card we have on the list is Ice Walker, a Mage Elemental. Two mana, one three. Your hero power also freezes the target. Plain and simple, the card is bad. I don't really think you care too much about freezing minions. And turn two, you don't really care about turn freezing anything in the early game because they're not doing that much damage. It's just too weak of a body, and in the late game, if you top deck this, yes, you may be able to freeze something, but I think that you'd rather have a card in this slot that's better. I think there are plenty of cards that are better, and this just isn't going to make a card. It's just bad. Anyways, that's going to end the video, guys. Let me know what you think about cards below maybe you disagree with some of the cards that i've rated let me know what you think i'd love to have the debate nice friendly open discussion always love to talk about these cards as a hype is through the roof for me can't wait to see the rest of the cards thanks for watching guys have a great one